Hello, and welcome to Shane's Microscope. I'm Shane, and this is my microscope. Let's take a peek. Today's sample is a piece of celery. I just had such a good time investigating that carrot that I decided to do another plant. For this project, we'll need that microtome from the carrot expedition. Remember, that's from the Greek mikros small and tem to cut because we'll use it to make small cuts of the celery. I'm just cutting it directly into water this time to keep those pieces hydrated. And I put two slices onto a slide, just in case I had any problems with the first one, but the first one ended up working out just fine for us. Made sure there was water both under and over before I put on the cover slip and pressed the air out. And now we can investigate them. Celery is known by the scientific name Apium graviolens. Apium comes from the Latin apis for bee because apparently bees really like this kind of plant. <laughs> that has the same root as apiary, which you probably know is a bee house. And then graviolens comes from the Latin gravis for heavy, as in gravity, and oleo, smell, as in olfactory, so heavy smell. Under slightly higher magnification, we can see that there's a very distinct row of cells on the outside, and that is the epidermis. That's Greek for epi on top of and derma, skin, because it's the outer skin layer. And to the right of that, the bulk of the celery is composed of the parenchyma. That comes from the Greek parenchyme to pour in and that's sort of the storage zone of the plant. And as we go along the celery, we can see there's a distinct region of different cells there, and that is the colenchyma, from Greek kala, glue, and enchyma, filling. And that's the structural support for the celery. That's what all those ridges are along the outside. Here's another one further along the outside. And we can see, zoomed in on that, that the cells in the colenchyma are of a distinctly different morphology from their surroundings, which I think is really interesting. And here in the parenchyma, I think that's one of those tracheids. And then the part of the plant with the most going on, I think, we have here in this outer region the phloem. That comes from the Greek word for tree bark, and that's what carries sugar down from the leaves to the rest of the plant. And then that inner portion there is the xylem. That's from the Greek word for wood, and that carries water and other nutrients from the root up to the plant, and that's why it's got all of those tracheid tubes in there. And then the transition between those is the cambium, which comes from the Latin word for change. Now, I thought it was really interesting that in the course of my research for this expedition, I noticed that several sources, even some encyclopedias, misspelled this as Cambrium with an R, and this is definitely incorrect. Cambria with an R has Celtic roots, and it refers to the Welsh. <laughs> The Cambrian period is so named because the rock strata that led to its description were found in Wales, but Cambium with no R has Latin roots and refers to change, which is appropriate for the part of the plant that does the growing. 
So <laughs> knowing a little bit of etymology lets us determine what's the correct word for that part of the plant, the cambium. And then I thought this was interesting. If you recall from my carrot expedition, I also found one of these there. I think it's maybe some entrapped piece of pollen or something. Not really sure, but it's interesting. Well, I thought that was a really fascinating look at the celery. There was a lot going on here. It was surprisingly different from the carrot. You know, it had some of the same tissues, but it seemed to be organized in a distinctly different fashion from the way that the carrot was. And we even got to learn a little extra about etymology and why it pays to know what words mean. <laughs> All right, well, I think we'll leave it there for the day. Thanks for having a look with me. Until next time, keep on peeking.